Hello children, welcome to story time with Miss Nidhi. Today we are going to Canopy Forest in India where the up world and down world have always been suspicious of each other. But it all changes when Gopa the dormhouse drops a book by accident on Fatima's head. A story about the biodiversity of the Canopy Forest and friendship. So the title of our today's story is Up World and Down World, written by Padma Parna Ghosh, illustrated by Sunena and published by Pratham Books. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started with our today's story, Up World and Down World. Fatima loved Sunday afternoon after a lunch of beans and kofta. Ma would read the newspaper on her favorite chair and Baba would sneak away to take a nap. Fatima could patter away with her book into the lively green forest near her house. The forest creatures would be sleeping, so it would be just her curled up in the quiet hug of the forest trees. Fatima would sit down in the shade of the Arjuna tree and gaze into the leafy upward. Ma had warned her not to climb the tree's branches. It was safe down below. Fatima didn't know what was in the scary upward. But that day, Fatima was in for a surprise. As she turned a page, Fatima felt a dull thumb on her head. Ouch! She yelled, rubbing her sore head. It was a tiny book, barely the size of a pea. I'm sure you all must have seen a pea. Fatima looked up and saw a furry animal trying to hide behind a bow of leaves. Hello, is this book yours? She asked, peering into the upworld, but she got no answer. The pea-sized book belonged to Gopa, a young dorm house who lived in the upworld. Gopa's little house, made of soft, dry leaves and twigs, was in the Arjuna tree as well. The dorm house had often seen Fatima reading and loved the yellow ribbons in her hair. But Gopa's amma had warned her about the terrors of the town. Bird. All the animals were fearful of Fatima and other human beings and tried to remain invisible to the down world. That Sunday, Gopa had been swinging on her green leafy hammock and reading nicely, just how we all are reading. She was about to turn the last page when a strong breeze blew the book out of her small furry paws. Down it went. It bounced on the branches and floated away. The book fell thwack and hit Fatima on her head. Gopa's tail quivered and ears twitched. The up and down bird should never meet. She thought and bolted home. Fatima did climb the tree but kept squinting and trying to read the book. The letters were too small. Finally, she decided to return the book to the shadowy furry creature. Fatima was really clever. So you know what she did? Next Sunday she tied five shiny red balloons around her waist and suddenly, guess what? She was floating up to the up world. Up, up, up and up went Fatima until she reached the treetops. Gopa was brushing her bushy tail when she spotted five shiny red balloons. Oh, balloons! Maybe it is someone's birthday. She thought excitedly, but what was this? There was the girl with the yellow ribbons attached to the shiny red balloons. Run! Run away! Squeed Gopa. The downward humans are here! But Fatima was faster. Fatima offered Gopa the book and asked, Is this yours? Gopa grabbed the book quickly and smiled. Fatima giggled. <laughs> she got Gopa staring at her ribbons and tied one in a knee bow around her tail. Fatima and Gopa held hands and went off exploring. Ding, 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 ding. Fatima and Gopa ran and skipped over the gaps in the trees of the canopy forest. They bugged Bake the fruit bat who was sleeping upside down. <laughs> Bake did not like being poked. He grunted grumpily and flapped away. A 
away to the next branch. These kids will never let me rest, he thought. Soon he was away in Dreams Village, where he was hanging out in a fig tree, biting into the fleshy sweet fruits. Gopa held Fatima hop over the long lines of beaver ants who were too busy to even stop and say hello. With long spindly legs and bubble shaped bodies, the beaver ants scampered all over the tree. These ants love teams. They work together to stitch large leaves into cozy nests. Next, they bumped into Firki, the canopy frog. He looks like a rainbow, thought Fatima. Yellow feet, red eyes and a blue body. Firki was so surprised to see a human in his canopy that he almost let go of his strong grip on the branch. Ouch! He croaked a weak hello and turned to a pounce on his lunch, a grasshopper. I thought only the down world had frogs, said Fatima, who loved chasing frogs around her house pots. Hari, the hornbill, was watching them from a distance. He really wanted to be friends with them. Hari was a friendly bird, but he made very loud noises, which is why some animals kept him at a distance. But Goba and Fatima didn't mind at all. The world isn't so scary after all, thought Fatima. How silly I was. The people from the down world are pretty cool, thought Goba. I'm not frightened anymore. So, sniff. Oh, oh, I think Bedia is crying, said Goba. Her sharp ears picked up sounds easily. The two friends hurried towards Vedya, a green wine snake who was very shy. What is wrong, Vedya? asked Goba. Vedya stopped looking greener than usual. <laughs> they cut down the tree. That was my home. Now I don't know where to go. <laughs> Right, Banke, Deepu, and other animals also popped out of their homes. Where there was homeless. A new concrete road is going to be built, and humans cut down my tree. <laughs> Bed, Bethia, cutting down their home, the upworld was alarmed and upset. We must help Bethia, said Goba. Fatima, Goba, and their new friends formed a search party. They searched and searched and found a snug tree hole home for Bethia. Fatima led the home with soft leaves and orange flowers. Bethia's favorite color. Bethia loved his new home. I can't believe I have so many friends. We need to have a party, he said. And what a party it was. Everyone got their favorite food. Goba got nuts. Hari got fruits. Baki was too sleepy to get anything. The ants brought home stitched leafy cushions to sit on. Nobody wanted Firki's grasshoppers. As for Fatima, she had to get the balloons for the first time ever. The up world and the down world were just one world. So children, that was the story story of Fatima meeting Gopa and upworld and downworld coming together. Let me share a little more with all of you about Fatima's friends in the upworld. Gopa and her friends live in the vast forest canopies of India. That means they don't live in the downward like us human beings. Instead, they live in the upworld in the swinging branches and swaying leaves of trees. Many creatures that live in forest canopies are now used to living in treetops. If you're lucky, you will spot some of them. But most of these animals know how to hide themselves very cleverly. So you have to be very, very patient. When scientists go to learn about these canopies, they have to use ropes or ladders because the trees are very tall. Some even use very large hot air balloons to get up there. You can imagine just how up Fatima had to go with her balloons. Here are some of the animals who live in forest canopies. The first and the foremost, let me tell you about Malabar Spiny Domhouse. This bushy tailed animal likes to live in trees and quiet, undisturbed forest. It loves to eat fruits and nibble on pepper sometimes. Yum, yum. This Domhouse sleeps like a hedgehog, curled up with its tails protruding 
shooting out. Next is on bill. These birds are vividly colored with long and strong beaks. Trust me, I have seen a hornbill. It's beautiful. These sociable birds love to eat roots, insects, and even small animals. They make nests and holes in trees. And when they have babies, they make a mud wall to cover up the hole, much like making a house. Next one is the green wine snake, a bright green slender tree snake that hides in the leaves of a canopy. It moves very slowly. You can find them not only in India, but also Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia and even Vietnam children. You should read more and more about these interesting animals. Now, let me tell you about tree frog. There are several kinds of tree frogs and they come in various colors. They can have white lips or red or yellow eyes and brown feet. They are usually very small, half the size of your palm because they have to jump around delicate branches. They spend most of their lives up in the trees. How wonderful is that? And last but not the least, fruit bat, aka mega bat. They hang upside down. Try to imagine what the world looks like to them. They love to eat roots and being busy in the trees. They can be super noisy too. You can hear them from a long way off. They have keen senses of sight and smell and are very helpful to us because they pollinate the flowers and fruits we love. So children, this brings brings me to the end of today's story and all the information which I had to share with all of you. I hope you enjoyed today's story of Upworld and Downworld. So children, do read more about the Upworld and do plan an expedition into the woods along with your friends and parents. I'm sure you will find a lot of exciting stuff and if you would like to share with me, do share. Click a picture and hashtag tag my motherhood studio i will be eagerly waiting to see your findings from the up world so i will take your leave now and i will be back again with another wonderful read for all of you till then tata bye bye